Let's rewind 2020 for just a moment. Suddenly, all my international trips with McKay Photography Academy are canceled. I'm looking at a lot more home time, which is not a bad thing. Pacific Northwest is gorgeous, but a decreased amount in my earnings for sure. So what do I do? Make my biggest photography purchase ever? A soulless minivan? This video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you want to save 10% off your first Squarespace purchase, whether that's a domain name, web hosting, their marketplace, you can start at squarespace.com slash TV. Why a soulless minivan? Why not a Sprinter or a van again with all of that fun character? Well, I really like the practicality of a minivan. It is large enough to sleep comfortably in. That's two people and two dogs. And also, they're really fun for day trips. That's the thing. This car is flexible enough to spend a couple of weeks camping in or just going around town with kids. And I'll show you how I've set this up in just a moment so that it's easy to switch out from one mode to the other without a whole lot of construction and building. I also really like minivans because if you're just driving it around town and you want to find a normal parking space or even park in a parking garage, this thing's going to fit in there. And very practically speaking to me personally, this was at a price that I could afford. Most Sprinter vans, and especially Vanagans, they're a little bit further out of my price range. And because of the size of this vehicle, and it's fairly modern, it gets great gas mileage. I get about 26 miles per gallon if I'm driving it carefully. Now I know for some people, depending on your perspective, you might be like, that's not so great. But for a small, comfortable house on wheels, it's pretty good. It's about twice what mini Sprinter vans get. And here was the goal in purchasing this vehicle. It was to get close enough to beautiful photo spots that I could go out and photograph, maybe wait for the Milky Way to line up, come back, warm up, go back out, photograph some more. And here's an added bonus about having a small, comfortable house on wheels. If you set off on this journey, your significant other is much more likely to join you if they've got someplace warm and dry to hang out while waiting for you to finish your photograph. So I spent about $15,000 on this 2014 Honda Odyssey. Now that was at the top of my budget that I decided for this purchase, and that certainly is the most I've ever spent on any photography-related purchase. You can save and you get much less expensive models. If you go back just a few years and are willing to have a few more miles on the odometer, there's plenty of models that are under 10,000 easily. But I wanted this to be a vehicle that would last me for several years and hundreds of thousands of miles more. And also with kids that are at or near driving themselves, this had some really nice safety features that make it feel like it's something that they could drive. Plus of course, the fairly normal car sizeness of this minivan. But there's a couple of features that really stood out to me that I personally was looking forward to in this model. Keyless entry. Not worrying about how far down in my camera bag the key to this car has descended. You walk up to the doors and you open them up. It's also got a nice backup camera. It's got a right turn lane camera. It's got Bluetooth and it's got lots of modern safety features like airbags all around, which again, just made this car feel safe and something, again, that my kids could drive down the road. Let's talk about the build, and I've got both a bit of motivation for you and a bit of disclaimer. If you were like me and prior to this, your build experience involved Legos and maybe some Ikea furniture, you can do this. Take your time. Now, we watched a lot of YouTube videos. There are so many. At first, you think there's just a couple, and then you find a couple more, and then you find somebody who has a build that really looks like it's gonna work for you. And we're gonna put two of our favorites right down below. I think it was Eric Explores the Earth or the World and uh, the cute sweater guy, uh, Bruce Parks. So those links right down below. And, and the Bruce Parks guy's build, mind blowing. We're nowhere near that. But I'm really proud of what we accomplished with a couple of trips, okay, maybe like a dozen, trips to Home Depot, couple two by fours and a piece of plywood.
with some hinges. Now, when we started this build, we had a much more handy friend come over to lend some support, but we quickly realized that this was within the realm of what we could accomplish on our own. And again, if we can do it, you can do it. Said I wanted this build to be really flexible, and it was important to me that the middle seats can be in here while the bed frame is in here as well. And see, here's the thing, I, I bought a small minivan. I also live in a fairly small house. We just don't have room to store this bed frame when this is acting like a regular minivan. So I'm really happy that we can have both in here at the same time. Now, I was pretty happy with what we accomplished with this bed bench build and ready to call the minivan build done, at least for the season. But Chris had another idea. She wanted some kind of shelf or vanity system. And initially I was really hesitant, but we went back to that cardboard aided design and started working on this. Now, this does need to come out to put both middle seats in, but we designed it in such a way that it comes completely apart easily without any tools and folds flat. So we can actually store it behind the bed bench system or stick it in our basement if we don't need it for a while. But here's why I love it. It gives us an organized place to put stuff. We've got our large water jug here. We've got a luggable loo. Yeah, we've got a little bathroom in here. Sure, it's just a bucket, but it's great. And of course, shelf space to put stuff. And this really cool little feature, spot to attach a table. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. I've been using Squarespace now for a couple of years for my photorec.tv and my own personal portfolio. And I absolutely love how easy it is to create new content and add pictures. You've got gorgeous starting templates that are extremely easy to customize. And if for any reason you get stuck, they offer 24 seven tech support. A great group of people ready to help you with whatever you need. Recent updates have added all kinds of awesome features. It truly is an all-in-one platform. You've got a members-only area that's drop-dead easy to set up. You've got e-commerce options if you want to sell your work or if you want to start a newsletter. Their new mailing system all makes it incredibly easy to reach customers and audience all over the world. Squarespace is a fantastic way to build your website. You can check them out and save 10% off your first purchase by starting at squarespace.com slash TV. Thanks for checking them out and thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And we also added little cabinets back here. And again, nothing's permanently attached in this van. These are just holding onto these little coat hooks and sitting in the spot. And I have to say now, we've got about 5,000 miles into this van with all of the stuff built and it all works and stays really quiet. These little cabinets are a great place to store knickknacks, and what we usually end up doing is stuffing the next day's clothes in there. So in the morning when you wake up, instead of having to dig down underneath, everything you need is right there. And it might be my favorite feature of the van. I'm a nerd, but I love this little Bluetooth thermometer. It's fantastic because we can easily know at a glance what the temperature is in the back of the van, whether or not we need to kick the AC on for the dogs, and just kind of keep a track, keep a track of the temperature when we're away from the van as well. All right, so we're obviously now at the back of the van. A couple of things that I like back here. One, we have another attachment point for the table. So we can set up the little table out here, a little bit of an awning, cooking breakfast, coffee, teas, things like that. This whole back bench though, folds up like so and gives us easy access to the space. Now this is typically in a Honda where the rear seats fold flat, but you take those out and you have this huge well that gives you plenty of room for stuff like a fridge. Now, as I was pricing this van out and the features that we wanted to add to it, I kind of struggled. Do we want just a really nice cooler 
or do we want a little powered fridge? And I'm so happy that we went with a powered fridge. I mean, the benefits of a cooler is absolutely silent, doesn't take any power, but you always gotta need ice. Obviously, keep your stuff cool. Since this is a car, we always have power. So we went with this and I was a little worried about it making noise, especially being right under us as we sleep. And one of the great features of this little Alpacool K25 is that it is nearly silent. I very rarely hear it. And that's great because we're waking up in these beautiful places with the birds singing and the waves crashing on the beach and we're not listening to our fridge. So it's a K25, that means it's got 25 liters in here. It's got a little light, so when you open it up, which also really nicely opens up in the same direction as our rear bench, we're finding that we've got enough room for about a week's worth of stuff that we need to keep cold. And again, of course, we're on the road, so we can always stop at a grocery store. It doesn't need to be much bigger than that. Other features that I really like about it, how little power it actually uses. I'll show you the tiny battery that we run this off of when the car's not running in a few moments. It's seriously impressive. So it's incredibly efficient, it's incredibly quiet, and it's Bluetooth enabled. Now, why, why do you care? Because it lets me sit in the front of the car and check in on this fridge to make sure that it's on and it's on the temperature I want. And if we went away for a little while and we come back, we can just kind of check in on it, make sure our milk hasn't spoiled because it's like 75 degrees. But what's impressive is how fast it does cool down. It'll go from about 60 down to freezing in 15 minutes. So I really, really like it. And of course you can control it through your phone in that Bluetooth connection or right here on the little interface. And when it's powered, it even actually has a USB port to power something else. So I'm really happy that we went with the Alpacool. There are so many models as I started searching that uh, it became a little bit overwhelming, but this thing is fantastic. Space next to it is where we keep our Tupperware full of basically dry goods, food that doesn't need to be cooled, plus kind of pots and pans and cooking utensils. And we've got a few other knickknacks hidden in the little corners back here. But let's move forward and look at our power system now. So right here in the center console is this little battery. This is the RAV Power Portable Power Station. It's a quarter of a kilowatt, about 70,000 milliamp hour battery in here. And this is what we use to keep the fridge running at night. And also we got a couple of lights hooked up to this as well. During the day, it is being charged from the car. So I've been really impressed. Yes, it's little and for long term, probably we'll look at upgrading and I'd love to add some solar power to this van too. But for now, two weeks on the road, this has kept us running and kept that fridge running at night. On top, it's got two AC outlets. On the side, you've got three standard USB ports and then a USB-C port capable of power delivery and also charging. And that's how we charge it as we're driving down the road. But you can also charge it via DC or AC and it comes with that plug and also a solar port charger right there and a little light on the side as well. And again, I've used this to keep my laptop running, powering drone batteries and powering up our phones, watches, and the lights and the fridge in the van. And it all sits right down here very nicely in the center console, along with some spare USB-C cords and other stuff to kind of keep all the electronics happy because I find it difficult to leave home without a large pile of electronics. All right, another item we purchased for the van build. This was Chris's idea, and I was initially quite skeptical because I've grown to love this. It's a little battery powered faucet. This runs down into our giant water jug and makes it incredibly easy to fill up our water bottles. We've actually even used it to shower. Well, kind of shower, wash our hair at least, and wash the dogs. Ultimately, I'd love to put a little shelf system here so that you can just set the water bottle down. This has a nice little measuring button. So you could say, I want a liter of water out of this and then it'll automatically shut off or half a liter. And we do have it just kind of floating around up here right now because sometimes we fill up our water jugs when we're standing outside or sometimes we're inside getting ready for bed and we want to make sure we've got water through the night. When we're traveling, it sits down here on the shelf. Ultimately, I'd love some way to kind of fix it in place, but still gives us that flexibility. So lots of little things that I'd still like to do to this van. But again, as I said, this season, I've been pretty happy. We can start to wrap this video up. If you want more, if you want like a detailed list of everything we bring that we love, all the different little lights and gadgets, you can give this a thumbs up. Or even if you don't want the video, it's nice of you to give this a thumbs up if you found it enjoyable. 
And look, I want to kind of close with a couple of things. One, I recognize not everybody has the money to spend on a minivan that they can then go touring around. And it made me very nervous to put down this amount of money in a year, especially where I knew my earnings were going to be decreasing. But it's more than paid for itself, uh, just in enjoyment and being able to travel and see all of these wonderful places and have a comfy place to sleep. I'm getting a little soft in my older days and be able to bring loved ones along with me that I care about and have on these journeys. It's made it really special. And I also, again, want to stress the motivational part. Prior to this, Legos and poorly built IKEA furniture was the limit of my experience. So if we can do this, you can do this as well. And if you're not ready to purchase, but you really love the idea of kind of the van life, check your local town or city. There might be somebody there willing to rent to you. Here in Seattle, we have the awesome Peace Vans Rental. We've worked with them a couple of times. They rent Vanigans. They rent modern minivans, the Mercedes Metris. They are impressive and they build them out. Well, let's just say it's a little nicer than ours. So you can check those guys out and they actually have packages where you can fly out here and rent for the weekend. Not a sponsor, I just think they are a fantastic company and I love them. Speaking of sponsors though, this was sponsored by Squarespace. And if you want more information about Squarespace, if you wanna build a beautiful website and if you wanna save 10% when you do it, go to squarespace.com slash TV. Thank you so much for watching. See you out there.